hitch is rotating up when you put it on the truck or this gap is changing when you're hitting bumps going down the road a lot. Seal is busted. You see excess movement on this expansion joint or this seal is busted. Uh, obviously you can see chafing marks, that's, that sealant has failed. You've got movement going on. Uh, for mine, all that was happening and this screw is gone. The next one's gone, the next one's gone and you can see the ones that we added. Now, since Hi, right, hey guys. Um, this is uh, late May, and yes, I'm wearing a fleece line jacket because it's cold. It's upper 30s, maybe 45 degrees today in Canada. So we're about halfway up to Cassiar Highway in British Columbia, Canada, and I'm trying to get this video done. And weather was ah, 60 yesterday, but today it is just not warming up. It's cold. Uh, there's our setup behind me. See the beautiful lake. Begins with a K, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, there's actually still snow on the ground up here. It's May 21st, and you still see the where they cleared the roads. There's still piles of snow that haven't melted all the way up. Anyway, that explains the jacket. Now let's back to the video. Um, I've already done the driver's side, and that's in the first video. Second video is going to be of the passenger side. I had some questions before I get into how I did that, and it's going to be pictures with me narrating because the video didn't turn out. It got corrupted, so I fortunately took pictures as I went along too. I'm going to use those to narrate how I did this side. Pretty simple. Uh, but people ask, uh, what else do I need to look for? So obviously, if the hitch is rotating up when you put it on the truck, or this gap is changing when you're hitting bumps going down the road a lot, you might have concern for some frame flex. Another thing to look at is this seal. If this seal is busted, you see excess movement on this expansion joint, or this seal is busted, uh, obviously you can see chafing marks, that's, that sealant has failed, you've got movement going on. Uh, for mine, all that was happening, and this door still doesn't open, it sticks at the bottom, okay? But another thing people ask about was the, excuse the mess, was the screws I mentioned up here, and I hope that shows up on video, it looks like it is, but you can see the existing screws and the screws that I added to try to tighten this gap up right here. So check these screws on mine. These were loose. I tighten them up. On the other side, we'll go around and look at that. On the other side, the screws were snapped off or gone. So on this side, and again, excuse the mess, harder to see because there's a drain line in the way, but you can see this screw is gone. The next one's gone, the next one's gone, and you can see the ones that we added. Now, since we added these screws, it has made a, a big difference. I don't have as much movement. Um, I don't have the chafing on the inside as bad. I don't have the chafing in the bedroom as bad. Where the, the I don't have the paneling on the dresser popping off. Because what we did was added sealant between the chassis and the sidewall and changed the bolts to half inch for three and a half and put sealant on those bolts all across here and this side for sure is not moving i couldn't do that on the other side due to the slide out but i did however uh change the bolts out pre-drilled the holes used the sika one csl sealant on it and it seems to be working so let me switch over to the pictures, I'll narrate those, and start the video part two for you here.
Okay, so once you get your mattress removed, you remove these three hinges, one side of the other, and there's a field of screws in this other piece of plywood. Uh, mine had about four in it. So you remove those two pieces, you can set the plywood against the dresser, and then I found that I was able to tilt the entire assembly up against the dresser after you remove these screws. So there's screws on either side in the floor, where you see the red arrow, screws on this side, and then there, mine had four screws in the wall, uh, pretty long uh, wood screws. Now once you get all those removed, this is all that's holding the bed frame in, you can stand the bed frame up next to the dresser and uh, get out of the way give you some room to work. There's a small box frame on the left side of this slide out right there. That box frame's got one screw in it, at least mine did, located somewhere over here to the left of that trim. It goes in at an angle into the wall. That one screw, box frame comes off, and it exposes these, this wiring. And the very first bolt in mine, in, in the chassis, is a few inches into the carpet. I just made a slot in the carpet to expose that bolt, that 3 8 lag bolt, so I could remove it. All these bolts on this side were snug, they weren't tight, but uh, they weren't l as loose as the other side either. Uh, here's the tools I used. 5 16 drill bit to pre-drill the holes. When it was chucked up in my drill, it was just the right length. It couldn't over-drill it. It was 3 and a quarter. The 3 and a half inch by half inch lag bolts. 3 8 ratchet with a half inch socket. I'm sorry, a 9 16 socket and a 3 quarter inch socket to remove the old and install the new. This is the Sikaflex I use. It's called 1CSL. Um, you can find it at Home Depot. You can also find it on our website, a link to it to Amazon, uh, at jpxrv.com, and then go to our store. Uh, store links at the top of the page. All right, next, uh, I used a paper plate to put the, the ceiling on, because uh, this stuff never stops dripping out of the tube. You can put the caulking gun over the plate. You can roll the fasteners in the, the sealant. You get a good glob on there, and go ahead and put, the seal, put them in the pre-drilled holes. So this is that very first one I mentioned. I just cut a slot in the carpet. It's about two, two and a half inches back. I was able to remove that bolt. Uh, get a pre-drill the hole with a five sixteenths bit for the half inch bolts. Pre-drilled that, put the sealant on the threads, screwed it in there and tightened it up by hand with a ratchet. I don't recommend using an impact wrench. Uh, there was a, it's a tight enough fit that some of the sealant comes out and you can see it around the washer, around the head of the bolt, I mean. Uh, the extra sealant that kind of helps keep that bolt from vibrating loose in the future. Head of the bolt or that socket extensions at. Found the head of the bolt. I cut an X with my razor knife over the bolt. Pulled the carpet back just enough to get it. Most of these bolts are hidden. They're under the bed. I think on my 397 only one bolt's actually exposed. And when you tuck the carpet back against the bolt, you can't really tell it's been cut anyway. So there's the pre-drill. Again, the bit chucked up in my drill, the perfect length. It was protruding out three and a quarter inches or so. Uh, so I couldn't over-drill. Uh, I was very cautious. You're drilling through a piece of aluminum. You're sticking it through the steel tubing, through a piece of aluminum into the wood. If you hit another piece of aluminum and push hard enough, you're going to drill through the outside of the trailer. Now that's a view of the new uh, half inch by three and a half inch lag bolt. You can see the, the code on it if you want to go to Home Depot and get them. Or again, I've got a link in our store uh, to an Amazon product for stainless steel uh, half inch by three and a half inch lags. This is a picture of the 3 8 lag bolt I pulled out. Please notice that only three threads, three threads were into that lag bolt. There's a picture of all the, the 3 8 lag bolts I removed. I did have all the bolts in mine. None of them were missing. Uh, but again, you can look at the, the wood stain, three threads into that, and then one thread into the aluminum, maybe. Now I want to show this picture. There's two uh, wheels on this bed frame, and you can see the dents in the floor if you look about a foot from it. I purchased some more wheels. I'm going to put four wheels on mine to help uh, preserve my vinyl flooring and not leave such a dent in it. So that's it for this one. Again, jpxrv.com. You can look in the store. And uh, find all the parts that I use, the bolts, the sealant, the washers, uh, the sealant, 
everything you need to do what I did with this one. So thanks guys, see you next time.